they say time only moves forward. That no matter what we do, we're trapped in an endless line, birth, life, death, always heading into the future. But what if that wasn't true? What if time could fold, bend, or even loop? What if you could walk into your past, touch it, change it, and see what was never meant to be seen again? Time travel has long been the domain of science fiction, but beneath the surface of theoretical physics, strange ideas linger, ideas that suggest traveling to the past may not be as impossible as we think. It's not magic, it's mathematics. And buried inside the laws of the universe are equations that whisper of forbidden paths through time. Einstein's theory of general relativity already showed us that space and time are inseparable, woven together into a single fabric called space-time. And this fabric can warp. Gravity bends it, speed stretches it. The faster you move, the slower time flows for you. Astronauts in orbit age just a little slower than we do. That's not speculation, it's measurable. We've proven it with atomic clocks. In a very real sense, they've traveled to the future. But the past is different. While general relativity allows us to imagine time travel forward, going backward is a much greater challenge. Yet, some solutions to Einstein's equations suggest strange possibilities. One is the wormhole, a tunnel that connects two distant points in space-time. If one end of a wormhole is accelerated close to the speed of light and then brought back, time at that end would move slower than at the stationary end. Step into the fast-moving mouth and you could exit the other side at a moment earlier than when you entered. It sounds impossible, but the math works. Still, these wormholes would require a kind of matter we've never observed, exotic matter with negative energy density. It's not something we can create, let alone stabilize. For now, wormholes remain hypothetical. Another proposal comes from Frank Tipler. He imagined an infinitely long, massive cylinder spinning at near light speed. If you traveled around it in just the right way, the fabric of space-time could curve so much that your path loops back to your own past. A closed time-like curve. A time machine made of gravity. But to build such a device, we'd need either infinite resources or laws of physics we haven't yet discovered. Yet the most haunting implications don't come from the mechanics of time travel. They come from the logic. Because if you could travel to the past, what happens when your actions there change the present? Welcome to the world of time travel paradoxes. Let's begin with the most famous of them all, the grandfather paradox. Imagine you build a time machine. You travel back 70 years. You find your grandfather before he met your grandmother, and for whatever reason, you kill him. It's a horrific idea, but it illustrates a problem. If he dies before having children, your parent is never born. And if your parent is never born, neither are you. But then, how could you have traveled back in time to kill him in the first place? This is the paradox, cause and effect breakdown. Logic eats itself. There are many ways physicists have tried to resolve this. One is the Novikov self-consistency principle. It says the universe will not allow any action that would create a paradox. In other words, something will always stop you. Your gun jams. You miss. You change your mind. Or maybe you never find him at all. This preserves causality, but it removes free will. You can go back, but you cannot change anything that would violate the timeline. The past becomes a fixed loop, immune to your intentions. But there's another idea. One that opens doors to infinite possibilities, the multiverse. In this version, when you go back and kill your grandfather, you don't erase yourself. Instead, you create a branching timeline, a new universe where he dies and you cease to exist. But your original timeline remains intact. You came from one universe and disrupted another. No paradox, just infinite realities. Some physicists, including proponents of the many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics, argue that this could be how time travel avoids contradictions. Every choice, every action, every change spawns a new timeline. You can't destroy your origin, you can only shift away from it. But this raises questions just as terrifying. If there are infinite timelines, how do we know which one we're in? Can we ever return to the one we came from? 
or are we lost forever in a maze of diverging realities? And if time can split this easily, is there even a single true past? Time, it seems, is not a straight line. It's a tangled web, an endless forest of paths, each branching with every choice made by every being, every second. The grandfather paradox forces us to confront something we don't like to admit. We may not have control. Even if time travel were possible, the universe may have already accounted for our presence. We wouldn't be gods in the past, we'd be prisoners of its logic. But the grandfather paradox is just the beginning. There are other, more subtle paradoxes that twist our understanding of time in even stranger ways. Some challenge causality not by destroying it, but by removing it entirely. And others raise questions about information, identity, and even existence itself. Let's keep going. The deeper we go, the stranger it gets. Imagine you receive a package on your doorstep. Inside, you find blueprints for a time machine. They're detailed, precise, far beyond anything you could design. You build it. It works. You travel back years into the past and leave the same blueprints for your younger self. Eventually, they find them. And the cycle continues. This is known as the bootstrap paradox. Where did the blueprints come from? You didn't invent them. Your younger self didn't invent them. They simply appeared from nowhere and looped endlessly through time. A closed causal loop. Information with no origin. Knowledge existing without ever being created. The bootstrap paradox isn't limited to blueprints. It could be a song, a book, a scientific discovery. Imagine a person traveling back in time and giving Shakespeare the complete works of Shakespeare. Shakespeare publishes them, becomes famous, and centuries later, someone gives them back to him. Who then is the true author? The paradox challenges our very definition of cause and effect. If an object or idea has no point of creation, if it simply exists, looping forever, then the universe seems to allow events without origins. It violates what we intuitively believe, that everything must come from something. Some physicists argue that these loops are logically consistent, even if they feel unnatural. If every event in the loop logically causes the next, and no contradictions arise, then perhaps no paradox exists at all. But others believe this defies the principles of thermodynamics and entropy. Information, they say, must have a source. A loop like this is like pulling a rabbit from a hat, forever. And there's a darker implication. If the universe permits closed loops of information, what else might it permit? Could your memories be the result of such a loop? Could your very identity be part of something that was never created, just passed endlessly around time like a ghost? But there are paradoxes that don't just challenge logic. They challenge identity. Consider this. You travel back to a moment where your past self is still alive. You meet them, talk to them. Eventually, for some reason, maybe by accident, maybe by choice, you kill your younger self. But you continue living. Time flows forward. So what are you now? This is the self-erasure paradox. If your younger self dies, your timeline shouldn't exist. Yet here you are, breathing, thinking. How does the universe resolve this? One possibility, again, is branching timelines. The moment you interfere, reality forks. Your younger self is dead in this branch, but you came from another. You're a visitor from a timeline that no longer intersects with this one. But another possibility is more disturbing, temporal inertia. The idea that once you've exited your own timeline, you're cut off from its causal consequences. You no longer depend on your past self. You become a free-floating anomaly, a traveler with no anchor. But what happens when you return to your original time? If the you that should have grown up never existed, will you fade away? Or does the universe simply carry on, dragging the paradox behind it like a shadow? Time travel doesn't just threaten history. It threatens identity itself, who you are, where you came from. These things depend on time flowing forward, uninterrupted. Break that flow, and you may lose more than you bargained for. Now imagine a different scenario. You travel back in time, not far, just a few days. You leave a message for your past self. Do not take that flight. Your past self reads it, cancels the trip, and survives. The crash happens, but they're not on board. Grateful, 
they destroy the message and vow never to interfere with time again. Except, if they never take the flight, there's no reason for you to send the message. And if you don't send it, they take the flight and die. But if they die, you send the message. And so the loop continues. This is the predestination paradox. Unlike the grandfather paradox, it doesn't involve contradictions. Everything in this loop happens exactly as it must. The past, present and future are all locked together. Immutable. It gives the illusion of choice, but there is none. You were always going to send the message. They were always going to read it. The crash was always going to happen. This kind of paradox appears in many time travel stories, from Greek tragedies to science fiction. It's unsettling because it erases free will. Your destiny is sealed not by fate, but by causality. Even your attempts to change the past are part of a loop that ensures you never really do. It also raises another question. If time is a loop, where does it begin? If your actions in the future cause your actions in the past, and vice versa, is there even a first cause? Or is the entire system self-contained, infinite and unbreakable? The universe may tolerate such loops, but do we? Do our minds, built on beginnings and endings, truly grasp what it means to live in a world without cause? And still we go deeper. Let's say you travel back in time and meet a young version of someone famous, someone whose death changed history. You intervene, save their life. That single act ripples outward. Wars don't happen. Technologies aren't invented. Entire nations never rise. You return to your time and nothing is familiar. The world you knew is gone. Your memories don't match the history around you. This is the unwritten timeline paradox. It's not a contradiction, it's a consequence. But it reveals how fragile reality can be. One small action in the past may undo centuries of progress. The version of Earth you return to is no longer your own. It's a parallel, rewritten version. You are now a stranger to history. A relic from a world that no longer exists. This paradox forces us to confront the scale of causality. Time is not just a personal journey, it's the framework of civilization. Change the past, and you don't just change your story, you rewrite everyone's. And if infinite versions of history exist, which one is the real one? Do we even belong to one timeline anymore? Each of these paradoxes reveals something fundamental about time travel, it's not just a technical problem. It's a philosophical earthquake. It shakes the foundations of identity, logic, causality and truth. And we haven't even reached the most dangerous paradox of all. Because sometimes when you send something back through time, what returns is not what you expect. You've built the machine. You've chosen the destination. You step through time backward. But when you arrive, things are wrong, not catastrophically. Not obviously, just slightly off. A color that shouldn't be there. A street that curves instead of running straight. People you know, but with different memories. Different histories. This is the Mandela Paradox, a term derived from a mass misremembering of historical facts. But in the context of time travel, it becomes something else entirely. You haven't just traveled to your past, you've traveled to a past. One similar to your own, but not the same. It implies that tampering with time, even subtly, may divert you not only into a different timeline, but into an alternate reality entirely. And here the paradox is existential. If you can no longer be sure that your memories match the world around you, who decides what's real? Is your memory more valid than observed reality? Or has reality shifted beneath your feet? Some theorists argue that the fabric of the universe contains what's called Quantum decoherence, a mechanism that splits timelines into distinct outcomes whenever a quantum event has multiple possibilities. That split, they claim, is not theoretical, it's physical. When you go back in time and make a different choice, you don't change your past, you create a new version of it. This is terrifying for a reason beyond logic. It means the past is no longer a fixed foundation. It's a canvas that can be overwritten and every trip into it is a roll of the dice. The Mandela Paradox forces us to accept that our perception of a stable past might be an illusion. It invites the idea that time isn't a line or even a loop, but a branching tree, fractal, 
and infinite. In such a universe, travel becomes navigation, and your original timeline may become a place you can never return to. But this still assumes that time can survive such interference. What if instead, tampering with the past doesn't cause divergence, but collapse? Enter the final and most catastrophic idea, the temporal collapse paradox. Imagine the laws of the universe are interdependent, a vast, delicate web of cause and effect stretching from the Big Bang to now. Every particle, every atom is where it is because of a long chain of events going back billions of years. Now remove one link. You kill a butterfly. You stop a stranger. You say one wrong word at the wrong moment. The ripple expands, untraceable, recursive, and somewhere along that ripple the web begins to fray. Events no longer follow logic. The chain begins to break, cause no longer leads to effect. Entropy loses its direction. In this paradox, the problem isn't contradiction, it's instability. Once the web of time is compromised, the system may begin to self-destruct. Not like an explosion, but like a glitch, a failing simulation. The rules no longer apply. This is not fiction. In theoretical models of time travel using closed time-like curves, certain feedback loops can result in infinite recursion. The universe may attempt to resolve contradictions endlessly, looping, resetting, erasing possibilities over and over until it collapses into entropy or singularity. And what would that look like? Perhaps nothing changes at all until it does. Sudden events that defy probability. Objects appearing where they shouldn't. People remembering things that never happened. A kind of informational decay like memory loss on a cosmic scale. Or perhaps it would be quiet. The rules would fray slowly. Physics would stop making sense. Time would slow, distort and dissolve. Reality, trying to correct a broken past, would lose track of what it's correcting. And when that happens, there is no going back. This is the nightmare at the heart of time travel. Not just the loss of history, not just the death of logic, but the unraveling of the universe itself. Paradoxes aren't just puzzles, they're warnings. Each of these paradoxes, the grandfather paradox, the bootstrap paradox, the self-erasure, the predestination loop, the Mandela shift, and the temporal collapse, forces us to confront a single uncomfortable truth. Time may not forgive interference. It may allow it. It may tolerate loops, branches, echoes, but it will never forget. And perhaps that's why we've never seen a time traveler. Not because it's impossible, but because every attempt leads to ruin. A whisper lost in a forest of realities. A machine buried in a timeline that no longer exists. A traveler erased by a paradox too heavy to bear. But maybe, just maybe, time travel does exist. Maybe someone already went back. Maybe they changed something. And the world you remember was never supposed to be this one. So if time travel to the past ever becomes real, it won't be a door. It will be a mirror. One that reflects not just where we've been, but what we shouldn't touch. Because every paradox, every theoretical loop is a reminder. Time is not ours to rewrite. It's a structure, fragile, complex, and maybe even alive. And if we ever do step into the past, we may not break the universe, but we might break ourselves. Would you risk everything just to change one moment? Or is some knowledge better left in the future?